I just want to just um, start with the giving you God thanks that um, we're here last Sunday of the year, 2019. As I've been saying in the back before we were praying, before we came out, um, God has been good to us. His grace has kept us alive, and we are here by His mercy and by His grace to give Him all the praise. How many of you, I'm sure, um, so many of you had a wonderful um, Christmas, lots of food, lots of presents, uh, lots of gifts, I know spending precious time with the family has always been a very important point in time. And the Blake say, you can get so busy, so caught up in the moment that, um, you know, the issues are there, but we kind of, as you said, we put them one side and kind of focus upon Jesus. And we wonder, if there was no Jesus to focus on, what would life be like? If we had no Christmas, if we had no Christ being born, what would our December would have been like? It would have been like every other month. But we know December has been set aside for us as Christians, as a church, to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, which has been a very, very special occasion. And I know that um, for the past few weeks, we've been focusing on some individuals, because although Christ is the center of the story, without other human beings around him, what would be the story be like? If there were no shepherds, would be the story be the same? If there was no angels, would it be the same? If there were no wise men, would it be the same? And, you know, we got to give God thanks that Jesus Christ, the baby, was the focus. But then all around him were individuals like you and me, other human beings who played a very important part in the whole story of Christ being born and his life in the human form on the earth. And we want to look at two other individuals who played a very important part after the birth of Jesus. We know we had um, Elizabeth and Zacharias and so on. We had Mary and Joseph. We had the shepherds. We had the wise men. And then, you know, your mother would know that there comes a birth and then there comes a, what we call a, a purification time. In the scriptures here, in the Jewish um, tradition, there was a time of purification. Apparently that takes 40 days after the baby is born. And for in the Jewish tradition, every male child had to be presented back to God. Every male child belonged to God. And so there was a day, 40 days after the birth, that that child was taken to the temple. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on that day. Think of it like today, maybe, 40 days after the birth of Jesus in the church, in the temple, the baby Jesus Christ is presented, not to the people, but to God the Father, the Creator, the God who he was one with, the baby, uh, baby Jesus Christ was presented. And we're going to look at that. And that, in the book of Luke, we get the whole story of the whole birth of Jesus and the whole um, scenario of where he was, uh, where he was born. But let's pick it up, uh, Luke chapter 2, um, verses from verse 25. And we may get it on the overhead, I think, if you can follow. Um, and and it's, it's entitled, um, Jesus Presented in the Temple. And I think I'm going to read from the New King James Version, starting at Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 35. It says this, from verse 22. Now when the days of his purification according to the law of Moses was completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting 
for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it has been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. My eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. And Joseph, his mother, marveled at these things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So those chapters from 22 to uh, 35 gives us an indication of what took place in the temple. And here we have the man called Simeon been present in the temple. We will go forward, we'll go a little later into that um, as we dig further in. I'm going to continue just to further on because here we have another individual who comes on the scene. And this begins from verse 36. Now there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asia. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow for about 84 years who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke to him, to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So here's the second character we're looking at. One is Simeon, the man, and the two is the lady called Anna, a prophetess. And she's also present in the temple. So our focus today, yes, the Lord Jesus Christ is always, has always been the center. And he's the reason why we all come to worship and praise and everything. And that is the very reason why these people were in the temple. Because on that specific day, the Lord Jesus Christ was dedicated um, to the Heavenly Father. But I want to take the first part and look at Simeon. Because it's very important that we look at the characters. Because we got to learn from these people. Because we too are people who have a desire to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and to look at Christ and to see how can we you know, learn from these individuals. What is so special about these persons that they are included in the word of God? Simeon was a just man. He wasn't just a normal man. The Bible said he was a just man. What does a just man look like? It says, or just woman, the behavior of that person is morally right and fair. Simeon is a just man. He's morally right and he's a fair man. The scripture says also, he's also a man of devout reputation. What does devout mean? Totally committed to a cause or a belief. A just man, morally right and fair. A devout man, totally committed to cause and belief. You see, when, when God puts people in the scriptures, he doesn't just, just put, uh, the, let's say, he just, he just identifies people who are just so unique and just so special that it speaks to us about how we need to be as Christians. Now, it says, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't mention his age. 
but I assume that he was a man also of good age. I don't think he was a youth. He must have been a man also of uh, a very good age, because the scripture says he was waiting a long time for the consolation of Israel. Now, consolation means to console. Israel at that time was in a state of sorrow and lost because of the hardships they were suffering under the grip of the Roman Empire. If we know, you know, they were always looking for a ruler, they were always looking for a king that would deliver them out of their, what they considered their bondage. From the time they, you know, the children of Israel came out, they were always under in bondage. And so Israel and this man was always looking for a, type, for a, a person who would bring consolation out of, for Israel. They needed someone to be a comforter, and we're going to talk about that a little later on. They, want, they needed someone to be their savior. And so this man was always looking and waiting for that time. Another thing we can look at Simeon is that the Holy Spirit played a very important part in his life. The Holy Spirit was upon him, and the Holy Spirit gave him revelation. The Holy Spirit gave him guidance. The Holy Spirit revealed to, to, to Simeon that he would not see death until he saw the Christ, the Son of God, who was to bring consolation. So here was Simeon looking for someone to save, to comfort, and to, to bring Israel out of hardship. And the Holy Spirit said to him that he was going to see that person. Simeon was the only person I can recall in scripture who was foretold and given an exact indication of when he would die. We here have not, don't know when we will die. But Simeon was told exactly, it says, you will not die until you have seen the Savior, the child, the Christ. So that, that is unique. So he always held on to that word. I will not die until I have seen the Lord's Christ come into reality. And this was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. Now, sometimes we, we focus a lot on the Holy Spirit when, you know, in the book of Acts, when the day of Pentecost, but the Holy Spirit was always present from the day of creation because God and the Holy Spirit is one. And the Holy Spirit was always speaking to people and individuals and leaders even before Christ was born. So the Holy Spirit already revealed to Simeon that he would see the Lord Christ. So, you know, we've got to recognize that the Holy Spirit plays a very important part in our lives. So Simeon had the revelation and from that day onward, he was waiting and looking patiently for when the Christ would be revealed to Israel. And so waiting played a very important part in Simeon life. I could imagine maybe he was a middle-aged man when he got the revelation, but year after year, month after month, he might have been in the temple just looking, just searching, just waiting. There's somebody unique, there's somebody special who's going to come to set us free. And so he was waiting. He waited for a long time because the, the, the word tells us um, in verse 20, 29, he said, Lord, when he actually came into the temple, he said, Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. Simeon lived to see the word and promise spoken to him by God through the Holy Spirit. He says, my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all the peoples. So Simeon, a man of whatever age he was, given a revelation through the Holy Spirit that he would see the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who would bring consolation to Israel. He waited he waited 
and he waited. And he waited on the power of the Holy Spirit to lead him, to guide him. It was the Holy Spirit who took him into the temple at the very unique time when Jesus was being presented in the temple to God, his Father. So, like Simeon, the main characters are he was a just man. He was a devout man. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He had patience. He kept looking and waiting for the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that was fulfilled for him when he entered into the temple and was able to present to God the baby Jesus Christ, which he was promised would come to deliver and to bring consolation to Israel. We move on to the second character, that is a female lady. And I said to you, God raises up some unique people to just be people who serve him and who lift up our spirits. And this is a lady called Anna. And we know Anna said was a prophetess. She was the gift, blessed with the gift of prophecy. Like Simeon, she was filled with the Holy Spirit. She committed her life to serving the Lord. It says with fasting and with prayer. Now there's something unique we got to look at Anna. Now the, the Bible doesn't tell us how old Anna is, was when she got married, but we know she got married. Now as Mark was saying a few weeks ago in like Mary getting married to Joseph, it's very possible that she could have been a very young girl. Let's say she was 16. Let's look at Anna at 16 years old. Now, I'm going to need maybe Blake with his calculator for this. The Bible says she was a great age. Let's say she's 16. She was married for seven years. That's how much? 23? Then it says she was a widow for 84 years. Let's add it up, Blake. I mean, I can't do that quickly, but 23 plus 84. I mean, is there any mathematicians here? Huh? 107. I thought it was, that was that. 107 years. This lady, picture this lady. I mean, look around us. There's no one here that age. 107 years old. In the temple. Serving the Lord. Not just one day, two years. 84 years. Now, now, the Bible says she was um, of the daughter of Phaniel, of the tribe of Asia. And I looked up that tribe of Asia, and it says they were beautiful people. So, most likely, Anna was a very beautiful woman. At 23 years old, she had an option. Her husband was that dead she could have gotten married again, legally and lawfully. Or she could serve the Lord. Because in the Bible, when you were widows, when you were without a husband, you had two options. You either serve your husband or you serve God. She chose to serve the Lord. 84 years, it says there was not one day past that she was not in the temple. Now, I think I can come to church on a Sunday or come to Bible study or come to um, worship or whatever during the week. But I, could I come here every day? Would I be so committed and dedicated to come here every day? So when I read what this lady has done, for 84 years, she has committed her life to serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just serve, but it's said with fasting and with prayer. This is an awesome woman, committed, willing to serve the Lord. Her primary goal and focus was to look forward, as the scripture says, to the redemption of Israel. Simeon was looking forward to the consolation of Israel. Anna was looking forward to the redemption of Israel for 84 years at 107 years old. And it didn't mention that she was ill or ill or anything. So 
God knows how much more years this lady lived because she was committed and dedicated to the promises of God. So we have Simeon, we have Anna. We have two characters that God has placed in his scriptures, in his word, on the day of his dedication, on the day of his purification, to speak something to you and to me. So when we read that, we say, what does it have to do with me? I'm a young person, maybe I'm 12, 13, 16, 17, whatever. What does it have to do? What can we learn from these two persons that have been so specifically put into scriptures? You see, we can learn about discipline and God's timing. You see, every, everything that we do is God's plan and God's purpose and God's timing. Everything that God wants to fulfill in his life is because of his time timing. Being in the temple at that time was, for Simeon was God's timing and God's plan. God said you will not die until you will see the Lord's Christ being revealed. The Holy Spirit led him into the temple. The Holy Spirit also dwells in us. So whatever plans God has put in place for us, through the Holy Spirit guidance, He will lead us, He will guide us, He will direct us. We must allow God's promise to take its time. As Blake said, you know, you know we have challenges and we're wondering when are they going to be resolved. God in His timing is going to resolve them when He's ready to resolve them. With the Holy Spirit's guidance, there will come a time when we will see the fulfillment of God's promises. God's promises to you and to me, as he did to Simeon and to Anna, will be fulfilled in its time. Whether you are young or you are old or middle-aged man or woman, God's promises to us will be fulfilled at its appropriate time. The Holy Spirit of Christ gives us revelation. Like Simeon, the Holy Spirit in our spirits, if we will listen carefully, will guide us, will direct us into his purpose, into his plan. The prophetic word is necessary for the encouragement and the development for us as children of God. It was the prophetic word given to Simeon through the Holy Spirit that led him into the Spirit. The prophetic word from Anna was passed on to Mary and to Joseph. So we, we realize that the Holy Spirit plays a very important part in our life. Commitment. Now when we speak about Anna, and Simeon, one thing jumps out to them, for us, from them, is commitment, 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 commitment. For us as Christians, when we gave our lives to Christ, we made a commitment to be a child of God. We made a commitment to be a servant of the living God. We made a commitment that we will serve the Lord for the rest of our lives by God's grace and in God's strength. So for what we can learn from these scriptures is that commitment plays a very important part for us as Christians. Dedicated, committed to worshiping, committed to prayer. You know, we have so many ministries in the church that we can commit to. You know, we can commit to the men's prayer, we can commit to the ladies' prayer, the ladies' group, we commit to... Um, being on the team at the door. We have commitment to be Sunday school teachers. And we can just dedicate our time and our service to the Lord. Because our service is not just short term, it's long term. When we give our lives to Christ and we serve the Lord, we got to think long term. We don't know how long our lives will be. We don't know how, how much strength we will have to, to do the work. But we, like Simeon and Anna, we got to commit ourselves to the long term term service of serving the Lord. 
Commitment not just means service, but commitment to come in to the house of the Lord. Anna was in the temple 84 years. Let's say she, 84 years plus her years of marriage and maybe her, even her, her youth. So over 100 years, she was in the temple. You know, she was in the temple just worshipping, praying, seeking God, following God, hearing from God. Simeon similarly was worshipped, he was praying, was a devout man, he was committed to the cause, committed to the belief. So we too can be committed by coming to the house of God. When we come here on a Sunday, we come here because we are committed to worshipping, we are committed to praising, we are committed to seeking, we are committed to loving each other, and we are committed to just serving the Lord in whatever capacity we can. So like Anna and like Simeon, we too are being committed to the Lord, committed to being in his house. I mean, David said, I would prefer to be in the, in the house of the Lord all the, you know, than anywhere else, you know? And so we have to have the same kind of um, desire to be in the house of God. The prophetic word plays a very important part. The prophetic declaration spoken by Simeon over Mary is an indication that we also can receive a prophetic revelation, a word from God that will inspire us. Now there's something very specific about the word, the prophetic word that Simeon gave to Mary. Now most of us want to hear a word from God. We want to hear something that's going to say we're going to be blessed, we're going to prosper, we're going to receive healing, we're going to receive uh, maybe new jobs, you know, whatever it is, there's always something we're looking forward to positively. But here is Mary receiving a prophetic word from Simeon. It says that Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel. And for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Could you imagine that you here, you are the mother of Christ and you get a revelation, a prophetic word, and you're being told a sword will pierce your heart. You're dedicating your son to the Lord God. But yet at the same time, you're getting a challenging prophetic word saying that you are going to have a sword pierce your heart. Sometimes a revelation word may be challenging. But at the end of the day, it may sound challenging, but God knows the long-term benefit of that challenge. Mary couldn't grasp it at that time. She probably went to home and thought about, my Lord, what does that really mean? She did not understand the prophetic word until Jesus Christ was on the cross, dying. Then she realized this is what was the revelation was from the prophet Simeon. A sword was going to pierce through your own soul. So sometimes when we're waiting for the Holy Spirit to guide us and to give us a prophetic word, it may be a challenging one that's going to challenge us, us to stretch ourselves, our belief, our faith, our understanding, and our hope, and our trust in God. So those are the things that we can grasp from this scripture about Simeon and Anna. But although the focus was upon Simeon and Anna in this last part of the, of the Gospel of Luke, the main sense of attraction is always Jesus Christ. The dedication of that day was the Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father in his human flesh. Jesus was the answer and will always be the answer. Simeon was looking for the consolation of Israel. Anna was looking for the redemption of Israel. The baby Jesus presented in the temple was the answer for both of their hopes 
and boast of their dreams. Whatever your hopes are, whatever your dreams are, whatever your challenges are, the Lord Jesus Christ is your consolation. The Lord Jesus Christ is your Redeemer. I'm going to ask the worship band to come up, but I don't know about you, but as Blake was saying, there are issues and there are challenges and there are difficulties. Israel was waiting for a consolation because it was going through a difficult time. It was going through a difficult issue. There were problems and difficulties and challenges that Israel was, saving, was, was, was facing. Israel was looking for a redeemer, someone who would save them from the difficulties and hardship and from the sinful nature. Like you and like me, we have difficulties, we have issues, but we've got to take heart that God is here with us. Never leaving, never forsaken. The Lord Jesus Christ, who was born to the Virgin Mary, lived upon this earth, was presented to God the Father, is your Redeemer, is your consolation. Consolation means comfort. When you're in pain, when you're in sorrow, you need a comforter, a consoler. Jesus Christ is that one. It says the Holy Spirit is your counselor and it is your comforter. The, the Holy Spirit was present with Simeon and with Anna and is also present with you and me today. Israel was looking for a redeemer. Redeemer means someone who has paid the price or the penalty for the sin or the fault of someone else. For you and I, who have sinful nature, Jesus Christ is the Redeemer who paid the price to redeem us from our sins. So if you think that you are an individual who needs forgiveness of your sins, Jesus Christ is your answer. If you think you need consoling, comforting, Jesus Christ, with the help of the Holy Spirit, is your helper, is your comforter. So today, as the worship band plays, if you think there's any issues that you think, Lord, I really need comforting. I need redemption from something that is ongoing in my life. You can come up and you've got a prayer team or anyone can come up and pray for you if you think you want to pray. But be encouraged that you know, God is looking for just people. God is looking for people who are faithful, people who will serve him, who will be in his presence, who will be in his temple, who will be committed to worship, praise, pray, fasting, and everything else that is necessary for our development. But I want to say to you, keep in the back of your heart and your mind, Jesus Christ is our cons counselor, he's our comforter, he's our guide with the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, I just want to thank you as we go into a time of worship and praise. We want to thank you, Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who laid down his life. We want to thank you for the Holy Spirit. We want to thank you for people like Anna and Simeon who have set an example for us to follow in our human nature. We thank you, Lord, that you are our comforter that we can run to you because you are our redeemer you are our king and our lord so father as we come in praise and worship may our prayers may our prayers come to you through the power of the holy spirit in jesus name i pray amen